If you, I know there's some, Donnie, I see you, he's up there. <laughs> Logan, yeah, there we go. Ellie and Jen, Ellie, yep. Yeah. So we have other people here who also went. Um, and we just ha- wanted to have the opportunity for them to share with you about their experience. So that's what today is. So will you please share with us about the different things that you did during your week in Louisville? Um, we went to a bunch of like soup kitchens and one of the ones that we went, um, I can't even speak, I can't even think right now. Um, children, we went to a children's home, we went to a um, home for disabled adults, and we just went to, went to like a lot of like soup kitchens and stuff like that. You, what did you say? A lot of soup did, kitchens and stuff. A like lot that. of soup kitchens yeah. and stuff. So you, did you prepare food? Yeah. And you and, served yeah. people? Okay. <laughs> Good lady, thank you. Yeah, you gotta get right down to it, I think. Uh, Lainey, do you have anything you want to add to that? No. Okay. <laughs> um, so you, you served different people, you cooked, you um, served people, you hung out with people. Do you have a degree from culinary school or... No, <laughs> no, definitely not, apparently. I know, Christine, you're going to go to college yeah. to work with children. Yeah. So, you know, when you worked at a children's home, that was probably apropos. But yeah. you, don't yeah. have, you, you don't have these skills before you go? Correct. Correct, yeah. Correct, okay. And how do you learn how to do all this different stuff? Is it hard? It's not hard to learn that, yeah. Okay. <laughs> it's not hard to learn those things because everyone's there to help you learn and the point is just to have these skills and learn them for life and just in general. Yeah. So um, you're not nervous because you know that other people are going to help you be successful. Okay. Um, what's the most unique thing you had to learn to do while you were there? Anything? No. I can't. No, I can't nothing I can't in particularly no. strange. Okay. No. I have two questions based on our readings today. Um, as you know, we follow the Revised Common Lectionary here at Trinity, which means that we, along with thousands of other churches across the world, read the same lessons in the same order on the same day. So these are the ones that came up for today. Um, And there are two particular themes that I thought about when I was thinking about your service trip to Louisville. The first is about God giving nourishment to continue our tasks. In our first lesson, Kay read, God feeds the prophet Elijah when he's basically had it and just wants to lay down and die. That's exactly what he decides he'll do. Then in the gospel, Jesus refers to himself as the bread of heaven that gives life eternal. So after working with people in need, how do you feel God is using you to bring nourishment to others? Um, I think he's just using us to spread the word of God and spread his love and the way that like it shows for the people that we're helping is they're very thankful that we're there and like there's just some sometimes like the, the smile just lights up their face the smile lights up their face yeah Lainey there's also physical nourishment with that since we're <laughs> feeding people yeah but the spiritual is they're really happy to see young people out there coming from a few states away just to help them yeah where they need help could they tell you were from a few states away? Yeah. How did they know you were not from around those parts? We were the ones with the accent. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what they mean, eh? <laughs> so, um, that's good. And so, would you say that one way of sharing God's love is actually through food? Yeah. So, again, thank you for your funeral ministry and providing all this food for people. It matters. Um, How is God nourishing you as people uh, through these experiences? What are you taking? Um, I think one of the biggest things, because this past one was my fifth trip, was that... It was your fifth trip? Yeah, my fifth trip. Okay. And it was just, it's eye-opening, because in the little, like, community that we have in Fort Atkinson, we don't get to see, like, the homeless, and we, but it's just eye-opening, in my opinion. So it's eye-opening mm-hmm. for you to see the 
people in need mm -hmm. in a different capacity than here. Yeah. Lainey? Again, it's the spiritual and physical nourishment. Yeah. We yeah. get the food. Yeah, That's you eat good. well on these trips, <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> but also, you're being nourished. I think you're also nourished in the community that is created between you, right? Will you talk about what happens as a group of 31 students plus chaperones? Um, what happens is we get a lot closer to each other. This was only my first trip, but I've already seen how before the trip we're not as close. There's certain groups throughout and by the end of the trip, we're all talking to each other and having fun. Yeah, you're really well connected. How does that occur? Team building. Team building. <laughs> and a lot of it is because uh, like, we have like, the guys and girls dorms, so okay. a lot of, like, we just kind of mesh together towards the end of the week. OK, yeah. It takes time. It takes mm -hmm. effort, but it works. Yeah. OK, the second theme that we heard about today is that of attitude. The psalmist says that they praise the Lord even when they have difficult times in life. Then the Apostle Paul writes to the Ephesians saying that speaking the truth is important and should be done with kindness and love. People can be angry when they hear the truth, but hanging on to anger, Paul says, and bitterness makes room for the devil in our lives. Paul encourages the hearers to be kind even when others are angry at you for speaking the truth. As you've traveled and worked and lived together with people you didn't necessarily know well, and in all different kinds of weather as a person who does not respond well to heat and humidity, I, you know, it's, I'm not my best self when it's like that out, and you're in close quarters, how has attitude influenced your experience? <laughs> Um, well, I know last year when we went to Kansas City, it was really hot. <laughs> and I know that like sometimes we just got on each other's nerves and mm -hmm. stuff. But towards the end of the week, still, like, we still got the bonding and we still got the closest with each other. Good. I've heard that this year is one of the cooler years we've had. And it was pretty nice there. I'm not going to yeah. lie. Um, but it was... Yes, we got cranky with each other because we're tired. We're because it's from real home. life. Yeah, yeah, it's life. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, we worked it out. Yeah, good, good. You're committed to one another to keep yes. working it out. Yeah. Plus, you have to get home yet, <laughs> so it matters. Uh, surely, uh, you've experienced conflict or disappointment on a trip because that's real life. And you have worked together to set that aside and continue in love and kindness. Any tips for the rest of us who are also engaged in real life about attitude and continuing together? I actually did write that down. I don't know. Maybe they'll have something good for us to hear. You don't know. The only thing I can really think of is remembering where people are coming from and what's going on in their life because that's going to change what they're doing, their attitude. Yeah, and exactly. Another thing too is just because someone's going through something differently than you, just have an open mind, like walk a mile, and try and walk a mile in their shoes to see what they're going through. Thank you. Thank you. I also very much want to give um, kudos to Kitty and Tim who undertake this trip every year, Kitty especially, um, Tim especially, uh, because they do <laughs> Kitty. It's all Kitty. I see her shaking her head at Tim. <laughs> um, they do a tremendous amount of work and um, I think it's really meaningful, the opportunity you're providing for our youth. Um, Someday, and Christine, you're headed to someday quick here, going off to college. When do you go? I leave Saturday. On Saturday? Oh, my golly. Patty, <laughs> we'll be here with coffee and bars for you, okay? <laughs> um, when, when you guys are out in the world, there is going to be another church that needs you, that needs the skills that you have learned here at Trinity and on these trips about looking 
at people and seeing them all as God's people. Maybe you wouldn't have done it that way, but <laughs> you're here to have the cookies and coffee and share God's fellowship with them. Um, I hope you don't hold back. Every church is different, um, but I hope that doesn't keep you from finding a church in your future to also call home. Of course, we'd love it if uh, someday you landed back here. Don't get us wrong. We're not trying to, I'm not trying to shoo you out. Yeah, <laughs> but we want you to know, too, that someday you might be someplace else that will long for leaders and fellowship and people just like you to come in and join them. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I love it. I love them. Um, we are going to sing our hymn of the day, Let Us Talents and Tongues Employ, number 674. I chose all these hymns to be about serving, about following God, sort of in the way that our LIFT students have been doing. Mm -hmm. 